This should be the last day for equipment. We had the last two loads of number 357 rock come in. This rock is a two inch rock and uh, it's non, non washed. So it's uh, gritty and it'll all stick together when we get done spreading it out. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead and we're uh, going through the steps of a uh, container barn building, including earthworks and then of course this gravel pad to set everything on. And we need equipment to spread this out and make it as level as possible. You can see I raked up around the edge by hand and the secret of this uh, exercise will be to keep the equipment on the gravel. So the equipment will be on the gravel, spreading out this pad, tracking it in, and then we'll have one final load of number 57 uh, rock, which is a smaller rock than this, which will lock these rocks into place. Now, we'll still have drainage. We're not making a hard, flat surface like you might for a road or something. We'll still have drainage underneath here, and we'll still have evaporation on this surface, um, but we will have it locked in place so the containers have a firm foundation to work on. And this is a 40-foot by 28 foot pad and like I said in the previous videos we've scaled down the pad to use 20 foot containers instead of 40 foot containers because of some project constraints and also I want a good solar aspect to this particular project uh, you can see I'm in pretty much full light right now it's morning um, by afternoon I get a little shade in the front but by evening I get a uh, get full sun again and then I have shade in the evening, late evening. But what we're looking at here is about six inches of rock. We need to compact that down, push it into the clay beneath it, and we need to do that on this pad. Remember, there's a trench under these edge, under this edge. So we need to keep all of the rock within that trench. And this rock will lock together, and it will stand up about six inches five inches off of the clay itself. Now I've got grass seed. I also found a bag of sunflower seed. Uh, so we're gonna put the sunflower seed probably in the outer edges and then the grass seed, my focus will be on this top surface. And then I found, a, I got another bag, about 50 pound bag of grass seed that we can put everywhere else. But essentially we're gonna try to get all this into grass. Why? Because we want it to be erosion stable. Now I may end up raking the bund. Remember we talk about all these earthworks have a bund at the top to prevent water from going over the top. I may rake that bund out by hand and just to tidy this up a little bit. And then we're gonna make a flail, which uh, we may or may not make the flail because it is hard work. I might just take a log and smash the sides, but we smash the sides with a flail or a log to kind of break up these clay chunks as we put seed in to layer seed in. We may even throw some topsoil on it. Now, could we use a skid steer and sprinkle topsoil on the top of all this? Yes, we certainly could. But we would need something to sift the topsoil we removed from the surface here. So by hand, I will be dropping topsoil with a spreader or with a riding lawnmower or something like that. The key is, is just, just to uh, get this as level as possible, get grass seed and straw on it as soon as possible. And then I can always top dress with topsoil as it's available. Because remember, the topsoil around the outside is still acting as a silt screen. So as I sort through this stuff in the future, I can throw that material onto the berm here. But I need to get the rocks out of this berm. I need to get like the little stumps and pieces out of the berm. And we've done that over time. You can see all the rocks down there. But tidying those things up can be done by hand. Uh, because we won't have access to the equipment anymore. We also want to be sure to get any rocks that are near the edge Because remember soil soaks water, but rocks The water goes around it. So these rocks can't be on the edge here Because they will cause water to go up around them So we want a nice manicured edge with no rocks No sticks and I want to rake it out make sure it's nice and level with the a-frame and then make sure it has a good grass seed and the best chance to grow. Now there's no water at this location, so I can't water this in 
and it is coming in the summer so I have to rely on uh, retaining the moisture that's already under the ground and then any rains that come along. So I'm giving you this step by step on purpose because when you do a project like this, it, for example, if I don't get any grass growing on this, it'll just become a hard rocky mess and then I'll have to bring in like lots of topsoil in order to cover it up. In this area out there, if, it, if the grading isn't right, it'll become a muddy mess and I'll have to deal with that in the future. So we try to do things the right way, uh, even if it's, we don't have all the materials to do it the perfect way. So we're working on a good, better, and best system here. Now, a lot of folks might be saying you, we could have put uh, like railroad ties or something around this, this pad to kind of hold the rock in place. And that would be great if we're just putting like a little small shed on it or something. But the right way to do this type of foundation would be more towards building a barn and a, kind of a pole barn design than it would be kind of just throwing some gravel on the ground and put stuff on top of it and hope, hope it works out. Uh, there's a lot of money in this project because we want it to last for a long time. But again, the 58,000 pound dump truck came in here. You see some of the tr tire tracks from it and drove out on this pad and drove around this site and didn't have any problems. The key though is to get it in grass as quickly as possible. And then I'm just gonna buy like bird seed and other types of seed to, uh, to just outline the whole area. I want as much green growth as possible to hold soil in place. Now we left this edge kind of rough here because eventually all those trees after a couple years of goats running through them, all those trees are gonna be gone. It's gonna be a level flat spot here. Uh, you know, eventually there may be a house on the site but in the short term, it's going to be a lot of temporary fencing and um, or, or wired fencing for goats. And goats don't care about how pretty it is, but I care about the erosion. I care about the tree cover. I care about the biomass that we're able to produce on the site because we're, we're primarily farming soil and carbon sequestering. I'm just loving the birds that are out here. Can you hear that? And if we can get a lot of ground cover and we can get a lot of biomass, the sunflowers, for example, will give bird habitat, will get the deer habitat. There's already been some deer through here and will give us uh, the maximum calories for the animals that are gonna come onto this land. Now, as for people, it's still a family campsite. I don't live that far away. Uh, we may, we're, uh, my kid's gonna do a project where he's gonna build his own tiny house and so we're actually getting a, uh, we have a shed already and he's gonna learn the electrical. He's already started to study and he's gonna learn the, uh, the plumbing and get that straight. Uh, I, I'll probably have to get a contractor to do the gas part of it, but that's gonna be here. Uh, we're gonna set up a large tent for family camping. And then of course, we'll still have the remote camping sites across the property. This property is listed on hip camp. I don't know how I feel about that, but it's tied to our courses and our activities where I teach primarily land management. And we have another person here uh, that teaches the survival and everything like that. It's actually Sustainable Homestead Institute. You can work with them directly or you can work with them through the uh, My Hip Camp listing. Um, ultimately, what this is about is how do you get your land project up and running and then maintain that farm and get it going strong over the years. How do you find land? How do you plan your design? How do you phase in your design to fit within your budget? How do you do the things that are necessary to turn your dream into a reality? And then when the obstacles come, how do you overcome those obstacles? Just like I had planned to do the original project in the city of Martinsville. And then when I had problems with that, I just got a bigger and better project someplace else. Because again, not everybody understands what's environmentally sustainable. A lot of people will try to get away with shortcuts and gimmicks just to get that cash. Believe me, there's a lot of excavation people. There's a lot of folks that'll just dump stuff on your property um, because they're gonna get that cash quick and move along. You've gotta live with it for a long term. Why not set it up the right way using the good, better, and best system? Why not get what you need now so you can grow into what you're looking for in the future I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead, where we help you transform your agricultural dream, your homesteading dream into a reality. 
stay tuned for the rest of this program. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, this is going to get spread out today. Again, he's going to try to stay on the gravel to pack all this down, to get all those rocks to lock into place. And then we'll finish it off with some number 57. And that's a smaller rock that's going to kind of sit down in between this other rock. It also is unwashed. Uh, so we're not looking for a pretty, we're looking for st stability. And then I will uh, get the pads on here for the containers while they're on the way. Because it takes like two weeks for them to get here. Again, like and subscribe. Ask your questions below. We do answer project questions. And uh, we do help with some of the designs and we can get you set up with the right people to do the work, uh, especially if you're in this region. I'm Justin Hitt, Prosperity Homestead. Ask your questions at www.prosperityhomestead.org.